Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're looking at the horrifying, disturbing, yet ultimately sad life of Halo's most disturbing character, Faber the Master Builder. If you want to dive into the source material of Faber's life, the Forerunner trilogy, then you can do for free. If you sign up for a free trial of Audible using audibletrial.com slash hiddenexperia, then not only can you get one of the books in the trilogy for absolutely nothing along with many other Halo books, you can also help your boy out in a big, big way. And if you cancel the trial before the month ends, you won't be charged and you also get to keep the audiobook forever. So, you know, really, it's a win-win it's a situation. More Halo lore, for free, and you give your fellow iconic lad a big helping hand. I mean, it's so good that even the Gravemind himself endorses it. Wait, don't, don't believe me? Just hear for yourself. There are many audiobooks, and I have listened through iPhone and Samsung and PC. Born in 110,962 BC, Faber of Will and Might was a foreigner that would ultimately leave one of the darkest marks on his species history. During the Human Foreigner War, Faber attained the rank of Master Builder and was originally a more conventional foreigner. He supported the Didact's more humane plans to not entirely wipe out the ancient humans, but instead just destroy invading forces and exile the remaining survivors back to their home planets so they could abide by the mantle of responsibility. In 98,000 BC, he and the Didact also worked together to create the infamous artificial intelligence Mendicant Bias that would ultimately go on to wreck the entire foreigner civilization, as well as illegally helping the Didact create his warship the mantle's approach. The Builder's most prized creation, however, was his most destructive one, the Halo Rings. Constructed after first contact with the Flood was made during the Human Foreigner War, the Halos would act as an ultimate failsafe should the Flood return, a method of self-destruction that would cost the galaxy of all of its life, just so the Flood couldn't succeed. Faber did face a lot of opposition when trying to build the Halo Array, as you would imagine. It was seen as a direct violation of the mantle of responsibility and everything the foreigners stood for. His most prominent opponent was his old ally, the Didact, of whom went into exile when Faber got his way and ended up building the Array. The Didact's wife, the Librarian, the Life Shaper, also put up a pretty strong opposition to the Halo Rings and only let construction go ahead when the Council allowed her to create another plan known as the Conservation Measure. This entailed storing samples of all life forms in the galaxy on the Halo Rings, so that should the array be activated and everything dies, the galaxy could be repopulated by the stores on the Halo Rings and life could continue relatively close to how it was before, just this time with a lot less flood. However, the return of the Flood and the onset of the Foreigner Flood War sparked Faber's descent into madness, driven by a lethal cocktail of fear, desperation, and power. He began experimenting on the librarian's samples to try and find a cure for the Flood, and as we know, one of his main focuses were the humans. When the Flood first showed up, they didn't seem to attack the humans, so Faber assumed there must be something about them as a species that makes them immune to the Flood, so he began desperately experimenting on them in the most sickening ways possible. Humans were shipped from Earth to the Palace of Pain on Installation 07 to have their Gaesh forcibly removed in acts directly violating the mantle. Little did Faber know, however, the humans perceived immunity to the Flood was just a strategy on their behalf and it meant Faber was chasing a dead end in the most disturbing way possible. When Faber ordered Mendicant Bias to test fire Installation 07, he accidentally freed the Primordial, the last precursor now part Gravemind. He ordered Mendicant Bias to interrogate it, which led to the turning point of the entire war. The Primordial infected Mendicant Bias with the Logic Plague converting it over to the Flood, while also gaining control of the Ring and ordering Faber to continue his futile experiments on the humans for nothing but the pleasure they all gained from it. Some years later, Faber travelled to the homeworld of the Ancient Prophets to seek information to help defeat the Flood, seeing as they'd managed to somehow defeat them with humanity in the years prior, but still Faber didn't know that that was a plan on the Flood's behalf. In what could be best described as a deal gone wrong, the Prophets rebelled, causing Faber to fire Installation 07, wiping out most of the ancient Sanshayun. 
Meanwhile, as the war raged on, Faber managed to capture the Didact, the leader of the foreigner military and his old ally and enemy. After failing to extract information from him via interrogation, he left the Didact for dead, stranded on a vacant ship in a part of the galaxy known as a Burn, one of the most terrifying areas of the galaxy, a region totally consumed by the Flood. These actions against the Didact and the use of the Halo against the Mantle angered many of the foreigners, as you can imagine, who led a rebellion against Faber to bring him for justice for his sickening crimes. Faber's security force managed to suppress the physical rebellion, but politically, Faber lost and was put on trial at the foreigner capital of Maithrillion, having his rank as Master Builder taken away. However, during the trial, flood-controlled mendicant bias appeared above the capital with Insulation 07, allowing Faber to escape his persecution with the help of a former Promethean, who he ultimately exiled to the same burn as the Didact. So, the moral of the story really here is to never trust Faber. <laughs> now on the run from the Foreigner Council, Faber began a new life in exile as a fugitive. He survived in an isolated region of Foreigner space, remaining relatively active in the war against the Flood with his security force, accompanied by exiled warrior servants fighting beside him. Continuing his disturbing ways, Faber would capture flood-controlled ships, claim to decontaminate them, and then sell them to warrior servants, only for them to be consumed by the flood pretty much as soon as they got on board by the flood that was stowed away. In doing this, he found a ship of somebody on board that he never thought he'd ever see again, somebody he thought was long dead, the Didact. After Faber had left him stranded in the burn, the Gravemind had found the Didact and tortured him for decades, giving him a form of the Logic Plague and sending the most powerful foreigner in charge of the entire military insane. Not only this, but the Didact came bearing a message from the Gravemind that would absolutely destroy Faber. His wife and children had been consumed by the Flood, used to create the Gravemind that sent him this very message. Given the Didact's insanity caused by the Gravemind and what Faber had done to him and the foreigners, he took great pride in revealing that all of this, his family dying, was Faber's fault. Had he not testified in Isolation 07 and released the Primordial, his family would still be alive. Faber, distraught with his actions, took the Didact back to the capital, and when they arrived, they discovered the foreign leadership had been evacuated to the Greater Ark, and the final survivors of the Council, left at Maithrillion, did something truly desperate. Despite interrogating Faber and him admitting to all of his past crimes against the foreigners, they were losing the war against the Flood so badly, they had no choice to reinstate all of Faber's power, despite all of his previous misdeeds. It was here where the Council laid out their final defense plans, the Halo Rings. Most of the Council were ready to put their faith in the Didact, and whatever he deemed the right choice for the future of the Foreigners, but Faber insisted that this was unwise. The insanity sowed within him by the grave mind meant that he was unable to make a decision as, as large as one that would dictate the future of his species. Faber convinced the Council by telling them how the Didact enjoyed telling him about the death of his family and their consuming by the Flood, to which they were sympathetic and all in agreement that the Didact's words were tainted. Thanks to much desperation, the entire council agreed with Faber's plans. In one of the final great battles of the Flood War, Mendicant Bias assaulted the Greater Ark, which was a bigger version of the Ark that we know in the current Halo universe that existed back then. Mendicant came with Flood and Precursor artifacts, which he used to quite literally shatter the Greater Ark into pieces. Faber was stationed on board Omega Halo above the Greater Ark, with plans to fire it directionally at the Path Cathona Galaxy one rich with precursor artifacts and one infected by the Flood. Bornsteller, who had become the Isodidact in the earlier years of the war, which is basically where the Didact imprints his personality onto another foreigner, thus creating the Isodidact, was also on board Omega Halo, most likely so he could see what happened when a Halo Ring was fired. Prior to firing, Faber gave Bornsteller the coordinates to the Lesser Arc, which is the Arc in the current Halo universe, so he could travel there, distribute the new Halo Array, which is again the Halo Array in the current Halo universe, and activate it, ending it all. When he asked Faber why he had to do it, Faber told Bornsteller that he was to share the same fate as his Ark and the last of his Halos, his creations that started his descent into madness and ultimately shaped him as a foreigner, for better or worse. In the final hours of his life, 
Faber had finally gained a sense of humanity, for sake of a better word. He showed regret for his sickening actions, and saw staying on Omega Halo and going out to try and save the species that he mistreated in so many ways as a way to repent his sins and make up for the acts of horror that he'd committed throughout his life. With the Ark and the heavy attack, Faber fired Omega Halo, but the Precursor Star Road that Mendic and Bias had come to attack with hit the ring, tearing it into pieces and destroying the control room, thereby ending the life of Faber of Will and Might, the Master Builder. Faber was a twisted character, undoubtedly the most disturbing character in the entire Halo universe, but to see him come full circle at the end of his life and go down trying to save everything that he dedicated his life towards, for better or worse, was honestly a fantastic ending for this enigma of a foreigner. Throughout my life, I sought power and profit for myself, for my raid. Now, at long last, I think I understand the meaning of a crime against the mantle. After this, no need to seek balance. I will await my penance here. Thanks a lot for watching guys, I want to give a big thank you to Chris G, Jack Madden, Stefan Kersick, Eric Brown, Sam Grafton, Ardent, Tomahawk, Taylor Hayden, Evan McBride, Locust, Bruin, Momo, Shikata, Richie, Tymon, and everyone else for the support over on Patreon. Honestly, I still can't... I, I can't grasp it, but thank you so much. Also, very big thank you to Ankari for the amazing Gravemind impression. That dude seriously has a good voice. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a very long time to write, record, and make, so don't forget to show your love down there in the likes and the comments if you did enjoy. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.